This is a video on the voting paradox of Condorcet. This is a picture of the Marquis de Condorcet who lived from 1743 to 1794. Marie Jean Antoine Nicolas de Caritat was the name of a French philosopher, mathematician, and political scientist born in 1743. He was given the title Marquis de Condorcet, a title of nobility, meaning that he was part of the aristocracy in France in a period right before the French Revolution. The French Revolution began in 1789, when Condorcet was 46. In spite of his position in the aristocracy, Condorcet advocated equality among men and women, and among people of all races. He believed in a constitutional form of government and the rule of law, instead of monarchy and aristocracy. He was arrested for those beliefs, and eventually died at the age of 51 because of those beliefs. He may have been murdered while in jail because he was too popular to be publicly executed. Another theory is that he took his own life rather than being executed. During his life, Condorcet made many contributions to both mathematics and political science. One contribution is the discovery of a paradox in voting with groups of voters. The paradox is now called the voting paradox of Condorcet. To understand this paradox, one must understand the concept of transitivity. In algebra, transitivity is quite simple. An example occurs with the greater than inequality. If A is greater than B, and B is greater than C, then A is greater than C. In voting, we refer to the transitivity of voter preferences. And that is, if a certain voter prefers candidate A more than B, and he prefers B more than C, then one can reasonably assume that this voter prefers candidate A over C, just like the algebra inequality of A being greater than B and B greater than C would imply that A is greater than C. We assume that that holds true in your preferences of, of candidates as, as a voter. So the voting paradox of Condorcet is the following. Even if we assume that the preferences of individual voters are transitive, this does not imply that the preferences of a group are transitive. The following is a real example of Condorcet's paradox. The Education Act of 1956. In 1956, the breakdown of the 435 members of the House and Representatives was 232 Democrats and 203 Republicans. However, at that time there, were, there was a significant difference between the 116 Northern Democrats and the 116 Southern Democrats. A vote was to be held regarding federal funding for schools throughout the nation. An amendment, which is, uh, was known as the Powell Amendment, to the legislation was offered that would provide funding only to districts that favored integration of blacks and whites in the schools. The Republicans were against the legislation from the beginning, but preferred promoting integration over just unconditional funding. And the Northern Democrats liked the idea of supporting integration through funding, but they still wanted to provide the funding. And the Southern Democrats wanted the school funding, but were completely against the federal interference in local control over integration of the schools. The following table lists the preferences of those voters in Congress. You have 203 Republicans you see there in the first column, and their first choice of the, among the Republicans was no bill. Their second choice would be the bill with the amendment that provided uh, that would that would require integration, and their last choice was just the original bill that just gave money to the schools. The Northern Democrats, there were 116 Northern Democrats, and their first choice was the amendment that would provide funding and would require 
uh, integration with the funding. So that was their first choice, the amendment. Their second choice was the original bill, which provided funding for schools. And their last choice was to have no bill at all. And finally, the Southern Democrats, their first choice, there were 116 of them, and their first choice was the original bill, which provided this badly needed funding. Their second choice was no bill, because they put as their last choice amendments, and the Powell Amendment. They had that as their last choice. To include the amendment would be to require integration in order to receive the funding, and so they had that as their last choice. Okay, we will assume that the preferences of voters in each of these groups are transitive. Every single individual voter uh, preferences are transitive, and all of the Republicans voting all the same, that block of voters, their preferences are transitive. Northern Democrats, their preferences are transitive, and the same with Southern Democrats. For example, we can assume that if a voter prefers the amendment over the original, and prefers the original over no bill at all, then that voter would prefer the amendment over no bill at all. This is particularly uh, looking at the column of the Northern Democrats. They're the ones that, that prefer the amendment over original, and they prefer original over nothing. And so you would say that then naturally would have, they would prefer the amendment over no bill at all. And that's what's meant by assuming that the voter preferences are transitive. Each individual voter's preference is transitive, and all the voters within the Northern Democrats, Southern Democrats, and the Republicans, all of them are all transitive. But when you look at combining all of the votes of all of these uh, uh, legislators and uh, uh, congressmen all together, the result is a scenario in which the, the group preferences of all of them combined uh, isn't necessarily transitive, and that's what you'll see uh, in, the next, uh, in the next slide. Consider the results of all these voters together. So here's the same table again, and let's compare original versus amendment. Just those two. If the um, uh, voting was on those two issues, are we going to stick with the original bill, or are we going to consider uh, passing the amendment to the original bill? If we consider just those two, look at only those two uh, in the preferences of all of these voters, you could say that um, among original and amendment, you could see that the Republicans would side with the Northern Democrats, and the amendment is preferred by those two groups uh, over the original. And it was the Southern Democrats only that had the original uh, ranked higher than the amendment. So the amendment would win in this case. The amendment would win. You'd add the 203 votes from the Republicans plus 116 from the Northern Democrats. Uh, that makes 319 votes. So this would win Amendment 319 to 116. Right? Amendment wins 319 to 116 as a combination of Northern Democrats and Republicans outvote the Southern Democrats. Now, let's look at a contest or a vote between just the amendment and no bill at all. If you compare just those two, focus on amendment and no bill. Amendment and no bill, well, the Republicans put no bill higher than the amendment. And so, the, so do the Southern Democrats. So here, the Republicans would side with the Southern Democrats, and no bill would actually win uh, against uh, the amendment, right? The amendment... Uh, is favored to no bill only by the Northern Democrats. Uh, so in a contest of no bill versus amendment, no bill wins, again, 319, because of the 203 Republicans plus the 116 Southern Democrats, they combine together and vote in favor of no bill versus the amendment, right? So no bill wins 319 to 116. But now let's also compare no bill versus the original bill. If you compare just no bill and original, looking at all of these voters, well, um, if we have no bill from the Republicans favored above the original, but among all the Democrats, the original is favored over no bill. And therefore, all the, Republic, all the Democrats, the Northern and Southern Democrats, would actually combine together in this particular vote, if we were voting on just these two things, that would be 232. If you add 116 plus 116, you have 232 Democrats total, outnumbering the Republicans, and the 232 would uh, win over the 203. So in this case, the original would beat no bill. Original wins 
232 from all the Democrats combined versus 203 uh, for uh, for no bill uh, among the uh, among the Republicans. So now, if you look at all this together, you get this really surprising situation where we've discovered first that the amendment is preferred over the original. That's one uh, conclusion. And we've also looked at how the original is preferred over no bill. But then also if you can consider no bill versus the amendment, you find that no bill is actually preferred over the amendment. So this creates this really surprising situation that's kind of a cycle in the preferences of the voters as a whole among all of the uh, congressional representatives combined together. So a strange thing has happened here. A paradox has occurred that is following a logical process with logical assumptions we have a result that is not logical and that's why it's called a paradox. We've just found that in this group of voters the amendment was preferred over the original and the original was preferred over no bill and yet no bill is preferred to the amendment. That's the cycle that you see here. So visually the preferences create this never-ending cycle. Suppose A is the amendment, O is the original, and N is no bill. It would create this sort of voting cycle that you see in the diagram here. So what really happened in real life? Well, that debate on the Education Act of 1956 was during this period of a lot of civil unrest in the country. Uh, under a court order, the University of Alabama admits authoring Lucy, its first African-American student in 1956. The Virginia legislature calls for massive resistance to school desegregation and pledges to close schools under desegregation orders in 1956. More than a thousand paratroopers from the 101st Airborne Division and a federalized Arkansas National Guard protect nine black students that were integrating Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas in 1957. These are uh, from a website called uh, www.tolerance.org org which is run by the Southern Poverty Law Center that's where I got that those uh, uh, items there so and the real history is a complicated story of progress and setbacks this particular bill was defeated but there were other bills that ensured some progress so considering the leg legislation in this follow in the following order which is called the agenda um, where you have original versus amendment and then the winner of that contest versus no bill that's actually the way I presented it so when you look at original versus amendment the amendment would win 319 to 116 and then when you take amendment versus no bill the no bill would win 319 to 116 and so no bill was the winner in this particular uh, scenario which is what happened in that particular uh, uh, session on that particular uh, legislation so the bill was rejected and Legislate, and that particular uh, legislation failed to pass. That's the end of my video. I hope it was uh, interesting and useful to you, and thank you very much for watching.